take any of your information for us so that we can make sure when we try and get in contact with you, we're able to reach you. Um, I would encourage you all to stand at this point and greet one another in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs>
Let us pray. <laughs> Loving God, we offer our hearts and our minds to you. We pray that your spirit would fill us, that you would cultivate within us all that we are and all that you would have us to be. We pray that those gifts that we offer to you, whether they be our time or our talents, our tithes or our offerings, we ask that you would receive those in your grace and your mercy. We pray that those who receive from our giving and that we will come to know you more through your Son, Jesus Christ.
I invite you to bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Most holy, gracious God, we indeed come before you with grateful hearts, knowing that you hear our prayers not out of obligation, but out of a deep place of connection where you seek to know us. You know our longings, our regrets, our sorrows and pain. You know our joy and our passion and our delight. You know us at the core of our being and love us beyond measure. What grace, what mercy. In the presence of your holiness, we know our shortcomings and yet we find ourselves transformed by your grace. As we recall how we have failed you this week by ignoring the urges that you placed upon our hearts and by moving ahead with our plans rather than seeking yours. How we failed you by closing our ears to the cry of the need for justice solace. We have failed you by shutting our eyes to the hurting in our community and the world that you love and that you have created. Forgive us, we pray. Create in us a pure heart of God that we are moved by compassion and that we do work for justice, that we are strengthened to do your will in our daily interactions. We ask, O oh God, that you indeed might melt the hardness of our hearts, that we might forgive as you have forgiven us. Let the words we speak bring healing and hope and humor and joy. Let the deeds that we do reflect your care for creation, your justice wrapped in mercy, and your tenderness undergirded by strength. Grant us new life, O oh God, resurrected life, O oh God, as we remain in your holy presence, opening our hearts to your touch, your movement, your calling, your nudgings, speak to us, we pray. Heal our brokenness, comfort our grief, expand our joy, renew our lives through your power. For it is in you, O oh Lord, that we live and move and have our being. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. words. May the Spirit of God speak to your hearts. 
As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem, and he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him, because he was headed for Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then he and his disciples went to another village. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. May your spirit move us, our hearts, and our minds so that we might become more and more your people as we learn who you call us to be. Amen. The disciples are starting off in a place where they feel like they and Jesus have been wronged. Right? Have you ever felt like you've been wronged? I bet you have. I think most of us probably have. They go to this Samaritan village. And keep in mind, the Samaritans are a different religion than the Jews. There's a significant animosity between the two groups. They are opposition for one another. They don't like each other. And they probably see each other as a danger to their own way of life. Jerusalem, you see, is where the Jews believe that the true temple is. But Mount Gerizim is where the Samaritans believe the true temple is. That's where they go not only to worship God, but to be redeemed, to be put right with God, as mandated by God. This is a big distinction between the two groups, and it's something they just can't seem to reconcile over. There's a lot of tension between the Samaritans and the Jews, and they've both wronged each other over the years. When the Samaritans find out that Jesus and his friends are stopping through so that they can go to Jerusalem is, so that they can go to the false temple, according to the Samaritans, of course they're less than thrilled about it. They would have been personally offended by it. You want to come into our village and stay with us when you're planning on going and rubbing your nose in our face about what we believe? No, thank you. So when Jesus and the disciples get to this Samaritan village, it's likely not a surprise to them that they aren't welcome. Now, I imagine the disciples are weary. They are tired of traveling. They're getting ready to stop somewhere for the night so that they can rest up and continue on their journey. So I bet when they hear that they are not welcome in this town, remember they're not cars. It also takes a while to get to the next town. They're probably not very happy about it. They're probably pretty ticked off. Who can blame James and John when they ask permission to get back at those Samaritans in that village? Come on, Jesus. Do you want us to call down fire from heaven and destroy them? We'd be more than happy to show those Samaritans who really have the power. Let's show them, Jesus. Man. Don't we know what it's like to feel like we've been wronged by somebody, even if it wasn't a direct attack on us? And because they wronged me, I want to wrong them back. Retaliation, right? Retribution. And I have the power to do it. And, Jesus, don't you agree with me? Especially with uh, platforms like social media and online presence, it's, it's more easy than ever to get caught up in some of that, isn't it? We like to get people back. You don't have to search long on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat to find people calling out their significant others in public ways for private things that they've done, or friends having arguments online in front of everyone, or that one person who posts something like really political or really opinionated and everybody else feels like they need to post something really derogatory underneath that post? Right? We've seen it. We've experienced that. And we know that we have authority. We have authority to say some nasty things. Because we can. 
Because we don't like what someone said. We took offense to it. We feel wrong by it. And we have the power to call down fire from heaven. Right? If we do this, when we think, I'm sure glad Jesus is on my side. I've got the power of God backing me up. It can be a little problematic. It's true, we are given authority as Christians, as people who have received the Holy Spirit in our lives, who have visible fruit manifest in our lives, right? I'm going to remind you what those are. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, right? We as Christians have authority and we see fruit of the Spirit in our lives because the Holy Spirit fills us. Jesus even says we will do greater things than he has done while he was on this earth. What power, what authority, what responsibility we have. Yet here, in this passage, we see Jesus, who arguably is the most authoritative and most powerful of all, we see Jesus refusing to exert that power. He says, no, we are not going to rain fire down from heaven. We are not going to do that. Assuming that he has every right in the world to strike down anyone who disagrees with him, anyone who ignores him, anyone who creates difficult situations for him, he should be able to strike them down at a moment's notice. But he doesn't. He refrains from using the full extent of the power and authority that he has. Jesus is filled with God's spirit, and he's been given the gift of gentleness. There are some, maybe even some of us, who think of gentleness as meekness. It is if the full force of what someone can do isn't what they choose to do, then they must be weak. Think of a boss in a workplace who sets very clear expectations. A worker consistently does not do what the boss asks them to. The boss has a couple of options, right? One option, fire them on the spot. They have full authority to do that. This other worker isn't fulfilling their end of the bargain, their end of the contract. Or they can give the person an option to change. Sometimes a good boss knows that the option to change can be the best one, though it may not be the most popular decision. Some look at a decision like that, and they call it weakness. Because the boss isn't sticking to their standards. The boss is too cowardly to fire the worker. The boss just doesn't have what it takes to take care of business. In reality, situations in real life are far more complex, as is the situation with Christ. What if this holding back? What if this refusal to use every ounce of power and authority that we have, that Jesus has? What if that is gentleness? What if that is the Holy Spirit working in the midst of a really tough situation? Were the Samaritans acting inhospitably toward the disciples and Jesus? Yes. Could Jesus have rained down fire from heaven? Probably. So why doesn't he? Like the boss, Jesus doesn't bring down the full force of God, even though he could. Instead, he holds back. This isn't meekness. This is gentleness. See, the fruit of the spirit of gentleness is holding back some of the power that we do have, even when others may deserve the full extent of that power, of that retribution. This runs counterculturally to what we learn growing up, that if people don't follow the rules, then they should get to deal with the punishment. Let the punishment fit the crime, right? That's the popular saying. If someone wrongs us, 
we get to wrong them too, an eye for an eye and all of that. And yet, we remember the passage where Jesus speaks and says this, You have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you that you must not oppose those who hurt you. If people slap you on the right cheek, you must turn the left to them as well. When they wish to haul you to court and take the shirt off your back, let them take your coat, too. When they force you to go one mile, you go with them, too. Give to those who ask, and don't refuse those who wish to borrow from you. Gentleness. It's about holding back, even when people wrong you. It's about allowing God to dispense judgment at God's own pleasure, instead of offering our own judgments on behalf of God. If someone slaps you on the cheek, you have the authority to slap them back. But holding back, that is gentleness, a fruit of the Spirit that is growing in your life. If people want to take you to court to take the shirt off your back, you have every reason to fight it. But giving them your shirt and giving them your coat, too, that is gentleness. That is a fruit of the Spirit that is growing in your life. When someone forces you to go a mile, you have every right to stop when that mile is over, to turn around and to go the other way. But going the extra mile instead, that is gentleness. That is the fruit of the Holy Spirit growing in your life. Gentleness is counterintuitive to all we've been taught to do. It's holding back what may be deserved when someone else has wronged us. It's a sign, it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit working in our lives when we find ourselves able to hold back the power and the authority that we could use when dealing with another. This fruit has to be cultivated in our lives. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to do its work because it doesn't come naturally for most of us. It's hard. It's work. When we're little kids on the playground and another kid hits us, most of us have a natural instinct to want to hit them back, right? It's built into us. That's why we need the power of the Holy Spirit to work within us so that we might have the strength to hold back when we need to. Did you hear that? So that we might have the strength, not the weakness, the strength to hold back when we need to. Have you ever seen a small child trying to pet a puppy dog? It's cute, right? Um, when they first try to, but sometimes it's a little uncomfortable for the dog. A kid will reach out to give a pat, and instead of, you know, a nice pet or a little pat on the head, sometimes the kid doesn't realize it's power, right? And he goes, bam! Slapping the dog across the face or on top of the head, somewhat unaware of the power that they have. Gentle, we say. Gentle. Our instinct is to come at things with the full force of what we have. Sometimes not even realizing the power that we've been given. We must invite the Holy Spirit to cultivate within us a spirit of gentleness so that we can recognize the power that we have and make decisions out of grace and compassion for others. The Spirit is doing God's work in each of us so that we might be able to live more fully in God's kingdom here and now in the world. And as much as we like others to get their just punishment for ways they've wronged us, we must remember that there have been times that we, too, have deserved punishment that we have not received because God has held back some of what we deserve. The Holy Spirit is about bringing God's kingdom to this world, here and now, and gentleness is one of the ways that we as God's people are called to live with it. When we feel ourselves responding like the disciples did to the Samaritans with vengeance and eye for an eye mentality, when we find ourselves reaching out with all of our power about to slap that dog across the face, it takes practice and awareness on our parts to stop and remind 
remind ourselves not to use the extent of the power that we have just because we have it. Not to use the power that we have just because we have it. But to hold a little something back. That is what it is to be gentle. That is what it is to be a people guided by the Holy Spirit. That is what it is to live a life worthy of the call that we receive as followers of Jesus Christ. Not to be weak, but to be strong. To remember that we too have messed up and God has spared us. So we too must hold back. Is it easy? No. Is it possible? With the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives, all things are possible with God. May the fruit of gentleness be alive and well in each of our hearts and lives. And when we wrong others, may God's Spirit cultivate gentleness in the hearts of those who have authority over us, too. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we have just begun to touch on what it means to live a life worthy of your call. We pray that the Holy Spirit will continue working in our lives so that some of the fruit that we are talking about this week will become manifest in surprising ways, in new ways. God, we know that it is so tempting to use the full force of our authority sometimes. And yet, we see your example. We see the love and compassion you have for us, and we see you holding back on your judgment of us and your punishment of us out of love. God, we want to be like you. We want to share that love and that compassion with others. And we want to learn what it is to hold back some of our authority. Help us to remember when we are the ones who have done wrong. Help us to remember the grace that you have shared in our lives. And give us the strength, give us the strength to be those people who can forgive, who can reconcile, who can hold back and who can participate more fully in your kingdom in this world. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I would invite you all to stand with, uh, with me as we sing in our closing hymn. Uh, they'll know we are Christians by our love. How appropriate, right? They will know we are Christians by our love.
recognize the ways that we have been forgiven, the ways that God has shown grace in our lives, and so that we might live as an example of how we do that in the world. Go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.